We are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Once again, Andrew back again with another live stream. Good to see everybody. Right now it's 9.37 a.m. Pacific time here in Las Vegas. And I want to welcome everybody. I got a late start today. I didn't do a live stream last week. Been a little bit inconsistent because I've had a lot of reviews and stuff behind the scenes going on. I've been doing a major renovation in my house. Uh, the studio is going to be undergoing some pretty uh, pretty major renovations uh, within the next month. So I got a lot of stuff going on, uh, but I wanted to get a live stream in this week to say hello to everybody and uh, just give you an update of what's going on. Some exciting things coming up on the channel, and I will talk about that in a moment. But I want to thank uh, Olivier Pena for uh, giving us, giving me a $20 live stream. Uh, $20, it's early, $20 super chat. So thank you to um, Olivier Pena. And he says, finally caught up another live stream. Keep it up, uh, stay safe, everyone. P.S. My daughter says she likes the intro song. Oh, that's good. I'm glad she likes that. I'm glad you're able to join us today. And I thank you for that $20 super chat. Really good stuff. We got Handquake here. Good morning, Handquake. Hope you're doing well. Uh, La Guia de per Perlas de Perlman. Uh, Yahoo made it on time for the show. Glad to have you aboard here. And we got Andy here once again. We got uh, somebody, uh, I don't know what that says, but hello nonetheless. I don't know your name, but I'm glad you're here. We got Allison Morgan, first time watching. Welcome. That is really nice of you to join us. Um, we have, let's see here, we have, I don't have my counter on right now. We got 15 people watching. Make sure you hit that like button. Let's get this spread out over YouTube. Uh, would be great. Obviously, that'll help get it spread out. Um, we got another super chat here. Wow, this is a really good start. Uh, $2 from NYC Bike at uh, 73. Um, that is very good. It's a super sticker, actually. And I want to appreciate that $2. I'm sorry, $2 super sticker. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So a good start uh, super stickers, super chats certainly help uh, the channel. Memberships help the channel, obviously, uh, on a monthly basis. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. So let's, well, so I want to get everybody here into the live stream before I start telling you what's going on on the channel. Some good news. I will be going to New York City uh, in December, and I want to see if we can meet up. I'm going to be attending a press conference, press briefing um, on a big brand. So, I wanted to see who's going to be around, and it'll be December. I'll be there from the December 8th to the 10th, and I'll be leaving on the 11th. So uh, if anybody's around New York City, uh, maybe we can get together and see, say hello. I don't know. We'll see if there's enough demand. We can do that. Uh, that would be cool. Now, that this is a big, big-time move for the channel because I'm getting invited to these big events and it's a good sign because we're growing, especially in the laptop arena, and we're getting a lot of recognition. So uh, a lot of hard work went into the channel, obviously, and we would I would love to meet up with some of my New York City um, viewers and so forth and just say hello, and maybe we can do something uh, during that time. So let me know if anybody's around in December 8th, 9th, and 10th, but again, 
I don't know my schedule yet, so my itinerary I should know this week, but just tentatively, maybe we can do something like a get-together, um, sort of a meetup maybe, that might be something interesting. Now, the other thing uh, that what's also going to happen is uh, I'm going to be at CES here in Las Vegas in person this year. Obviously, to this year it will be in person as well as being virtual, sort of a hybrid show. And the good news on that one is uh, I have... A lot of meetings set up with some really big brands, obviously. Uh, I'll, I'll get more into it as we get towards there. Um, but obviously the usuals, Lenovo's, uh, HP, Dell, I'll be meeting with all of them. So I'll have a lot of good stuff for you from CES. I'm going to go to the media events, obviously, and that is going to be great. So a lot of stuff coming up on the channel. I got a lot of good stuff that has come into the studio as well. So... Uh, I just took delivery of the MSI Z, the MSI Creator Z or Z Creator 16, 16 inch uh, laptop geared towards creators. It's good. It's looking pretty good. I got another Legion here that we're going to talk about this week uh, in the studio. But I've been using the Duo 2, okay, NYC bike. I see you got yours on Friday. Uh, I've been using the Duo 2, which you see here. And I'm using it with the Slim Pen 2. And I've, I got to say something about the Duo 2. Uh, I don't know if this has been much maligned by uh, some other more mainstream reviewers, but I got to say, I've been using this for the past week. I can't stop putting this down. It's that good. I'm loving this. This is so much better, more improved, much improved over the first gen from last year. And uh, I'm really liking it. It's a very, very nice device. Now, of course, it's not perfect, as I mentioned in my review of it which did okay, actually. I got pretty good views on it. Um, not the most views, but considering I don't do too many uh, stuff that, like with phones and stuff, I started to do more and more with that, of course. I used to do a lot of that. Uh, it did pretty well. And I got to say, I'm loving this Obsidian. Looks pretty good. And I also have the cover here. This is the Duo 2 pen cover. And you can see it here. And we're going to unbox it right now. This is $65. A link is in the description below. It's expensive. Uh, but if you do use the Slim Pen 2, I think it might be worth your while to get it. Um, good to see Jan Henrik here. This is the place where the stars meet, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so, oh, so um, also a lot of people have been liking that intro on that video I dropped yesterday, the music. I'll get you that, Business Insider. I'm glad you like the music. It is copyright or... Uh, it is uh, copyright free music, or I pay for the license rather through Epidemic Sound. I'll get you that information. Uh, hopefully, after the stream, I'll put it in the in the description below. Now, getting back to the Surface Duo Two, as you see here. So I've been using the pen with it, and again, the pen, one hundred and thirty dollar premium on top of that. Again, this is one of the cons. It is expensive, but it's not for everybody. It's a good productivity tool. And I got to say, the pen has been working great as well. You can stick it magnetically onto the device, as you see here. And I think it's been pretty good. I actually like it. Um, I think that the form factor is so something that I do really like. Um, and, of course, if you can look at it here, um, you can see that it opens up. And then you can have, a, again, uh, two screens, obviously. And you can... You can see here how easy and fluid it is. Now, this has 90 hertz displays. These are two 90 hertz displays, and I can show you here. And you can see there, um, bright displays, 800 nits. I went over all that in the video. We'll take a look at it. But let's talk about this, which I picked up. I received it on Friday. I haven't had a chance to really um, use it yet. So let's open it up. And... Let's see what we get in the box. Now, I do have the bumper case on it already. So that I don't think most people should buy. That's $40. Um, and so this is the box there. Actually, I don't need myself on there. Let me turn that off. Um, so there's the box. And then inside, of course, is the cover. But let's see. You get some documentation. So you get this here. And then, I guess, warranty information, safety information, you get a little bit of a guide here to tell you how to use it. And if you want to see it here, it's right there. Okay, we may need that. And then, of course, you get this part. And, and then you also get the bumper part. So the bumper part 
will be one piece here and one piece there. I don't know if I need to put it on since I've already got the bumper from this one. I may just have to take one piece off. So looking at it right off the bat, I can tell you uh, this is a, it's a plastic. It feels like plastic and it has like a nice finish here. You can see there. It's like a, almost like a nice grip there. So it'll probably slot on pretty nicely. So I already have a bumper on that side. So let me take it off. I don't know if I can reuse the bumper. Who knows? But this was the original bumper that I bought, $40. And then let's see if this slides in. Let's see how this works. Yeah, it just goes right on. Boom. And I can take this sticker off. Okay. And there it is. So I would have normally, I would have put these two on, but I already had the bumper on it. Very expensive, $65. Now, so these are the original bumpers that I had, but since I already had it on there, I don't think I need to put the other ones on. And here it is with the, on the case, and we can take a look at it over here. There's the thickness. Okay. And then here it is on the front. Gives you a little bit more front protection, a little bit more of a grip. Okay, a little bit more of a grip. And then let's see if it charges the pen, because that's one of the reasons I got it. Here's the pen. Let's take a look. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. And sticks right on magnetically. And there it is. It's charging. You can see the charging light. And I got to tell you, the pen sticks magnetically pretty securely. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. This is not going anywhere. Let me see if I can put it over here. Yeah, that's not, that's not, going, that's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's on pretty tight. That's much better. That's a much better fit than what was before. And it's charging the pen. So there it is. That's the case. Not a huge deal. It's $65, a little bit expensive in my opinion. But it does do the job, I guess, if you want to use the pen, not have to worry about charging it. It sticks right on there, especially if you have a Surface Duo 2. If you have a Surface Laptop Studio, you have an option to charge it that way. But of course, if you don't have those devices and you don't want to spend extra for the charger, then you can just get this case and that solves the problem. It also solves the issue of taking it with you on the go. So there you have it. All right, we got 50 of you watching, only 16 likes. What's going on, people? Here is the case, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, let me know what you think about it. Okay. Uh, I like it. Now, if for, those of the, you, now the, for those of you that didn't see my video, let's, uh, let's hook it up to my HDMI port so we can take a look at what's inside this device. So when, one of the things you can use with this device, of course, is the fact that you can use it as a, uh, you can connect it to a monitor. And actually what you're seeing here is the device itself. I have it connected. And as you can see, it's very fluid, very smooth and 90 Hertz. Uh, I like that. Now I can use, obviously I can use the pen. So let me uh, take a look at the pen. We can uh, zoom out a little bit. Now, I, yes, I believe it will, uh, um, Inky Mars, I think it will charge the regular Slim Pen from what I understand, uh, but don't quote me on that. Check out Windows Central. I think he's talked about that over there. I think Daniel Rubino's talked about it in an article, uh, but I have the Slim Pen too, and that's what's on there right now. And one of the things, and let me unplug it for a moment. Um, I wanted to see how it would look with the pen in, so it is a little bit uh, more extended out when you do have it folded here. So that's something to be aware of. That pen does stick out a little bit more than the, the camera protrusion, as you see there. So there you go. But uh, actually, I'm thinking it's a pretty good accessory. I just wish it wasn't so expensive. Uh, but it does stick very, very securely on it. It's not going anywhere. So if you put it in your pocket, it's going to stay on there. It's a pretty secure connection. Uh, Lagia is saying, I would have loved to, I would love to love the Surface Duo 2, but I'm afraid that Microsoft will just let it go as it did with Lumia's, but I love the idea of it. Well, hopefully they won't. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing if maybe they'll do the Neo because that would have been great. And they did show it in a, um, a, a Netflix show. Somebody had it. I think it was uh, Ryan Reynolds had the character had a Surface Neo. So there you go. 
It's actually been pretty good. I did uh, apply that November update to AAD, and I thought very, very much more smooth uh, experience than it was last year, of course, and it is a little bit better. Now, when I did unbox this and I did set it up for the first time, there was a update right away. And when I got that update, it was, a, I get about 800 megabyte or so update or something to that effect. And it was, uh, fixed a lot of issues right out of the box. So I think a lot of the reviewers that reviewed this uh, before day one or launch day or who had it uh, and based it on a pre-update um, experience, I think they're missing out on there. Good to see Mallory. How are you? Sorry you've been missing these days. Hi, Andrew. Good to see you, Mallory. Glad you could join us. Yes, Sarthic. It is Red Notice by with Ryan Reynolds. And he had the actually, he had the Surface Neo. Uh, looked kind of cool. It would be nice if Microsoft would release that device. It would be really nice. Uh, not 120 hertz. There are two 90 hertz displays. So these are two 90 hertz displays, um, as you can see there. Um, and they are fluid. Now, not 120 hertz. They are 800 nits a piece. Now, battery life, as I mentioned in my review, is about five hours. I'm averaging about five hours of screen on time, which is good. I think for the type of the device it is, it's pretty good. Uh, good to see Jeremy off topic, but great full review of the NV17. Does the laptop have 120 hertz refresh rate? It. Ha I should have mentioned this, and I'm going to start doing these in the videos that I start uh, providing to the channel and obviously releasing that was a 60 hertz display so i'm actually wanting to see more 120 hertz i got a new one here into the studio the msi creator z16 or the z creator 16 or whatever it is uh from msi a really high-end laptop with an rtx i think 3060 gpu it's got the core i think i might i don't know if i have the core i7 or the core i9 11 900h maybe i'm not sure i'll have to unbox it this week that one has 120 hertz, 2.5K, uh, 16 to 10 display. I'm looking forward to that one that just came to the studio. Um, according to Sarthik, I, Andrew, liking your work. As always, any update on getting the Asus VivoBook Pro 16X? I'm waiting on Asus. I've already reached out to them. Hopefully, they'll get me something soon. Right now, they don't have one for me. Was that the, scre the, she the scene shot before the Neo is postponed? You know what? I'm not sure. I would imagine it was because probably they were seeding it to the Hollywood uh, productions and hope that it will create some buzz or generate some buzz. And it, it certainly has a little bit of buzz, even though they killed the Neo or allegedly killed the Neo, but we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be good, Mar Mallory. It's geared towards creators, that MSI laptop, so should be pretty good. I'm just bouncing around a little bit right now, just going through the different things, a little bit more of an open show. For those of uh, those of you joining late, uh, the 44 of you watching, I'm glad to see you here. Obviously, hit that like button, hit subscribe, of course, if you want to see more content of like this and so forth. But I will be in New York. I was invited to New York City to uh, attend a very important press briefing. I will talk more about it as I can. I'm under embargo. I probably can tell you who it is at some point, um, as I get closer to it, I'll find out what I can say. I know I cannot talk about what I will see, not until a certain date after that. So, but I'm excited. Uh, and those of you in the New York city area want to get to gather, maybe a meetup, maybe we can organize something if I get enough demand. So anybody in the New York city area, December 8th through the 10th. And those are the dates that I'm really playing with because the 11th, I'll be back in Vegas uh, I would love to meet some of you out there, especially in New York City, my hometown. So I get to go home uh, for a few days and get to uh, experience New York City as the pandemic hopefully is going down. Hopefully it's going away. I don't think it's going away, but hopefully things are getting a little bit better. So we'll see. Uh, Jeremy saying, have you heard anything about the Spectre X360 16? Has that laptop been released yet? Excited for that one. Um, I spoke to HP. I can tell you that, uh, not yet. They do expect to have it. I don't, I don't, Jeremy, I think we're going to see that early next year. I don't think, and, and I could be wrong because we still have all of December. We got one more week here or so in November, early December, we have December coming, but my feeling is, I think we're going to see a lot of early stuff next year, maybe early next year. Again, I'm waiting on HP on that. I could be wrong. Uh, they told me they're, they don't have a date yet, but they will be sending review units out on that. I've been looking forward to that one. 
Uh, the surface, according to Michael Cochran, the surface due to accessory is so weak, no accessories in the box. And if you buy a slim pen, you can't charge it if you don't already have some kind of surface device. So the, the right, so Michael, the, this is, obviously the slim pen too is on this. And I'm connected to the uh, HDMI because I want to show you what's inside the, the um, phone. But this is the pen slim pen two this is the accessory it's actually pretty nice feeling it's a plastic i don't expect a lot you know 65 dollars is a lot to pay the pen is 130 and then on top of the 14.99 you're paying for the device starting price it really is a very very expensive device now having said that um you can buy you can use the original slim pen I think it will charge, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it will charge as this Slim Pen 2 does on this accessory, but I think the Slim Pen 1, correct me if I'm wrong, if you bought it as a separate accessory, you will, you also got a charger with that. Now they do sell, Microsoft does sell a, a charging accessory for the Slim Pen 2, which I think is another like $30, $35, which is not that great as far as price is concerned. Any word on the OtterBox Surface Duo 2? Now, I did, I actually reached out to OtterBox. I want to check out the uh, one they have for the Surface Duo 2. I know they have one coming. If you go to their website, I believe they have a couple of SKUs that are coming out for it. It uh, looks good. I mean, OtterBox will give you some really good protection. You know, it's one of the things you're going to notice about this one. The bumpers, they're okay. I mean, this is going to give you a little bit more protection than not having anything, of course, but it's not going to be the maximum protection. Really what this case does is gives you an ability to charge and store the pen. That's pretty much it. Very securely, I got to say, it's not going anywhere, that pen. The Slim Pen 2 is on sale on their website. So NYC Bike 73, uh, check it out. If you if anybody who wants to, go to the Microsoft website. You could probably also buy it at Best Buy. Uh, the, I purchased the I purchased this one, the uh, Surface Duo 2 pen cover. I purchased it from Microsoft. You can go over to their website. There is a link in the description below if you want to check it out, if you want to buy it. $65, not the cheapest thing out there, but, of course, um, they're charging a premium on that. Now, having said that, I've been using the Surface Duo 2 for the past week, and I am absolutely loving it. Now, I know it got some negative press, I guess, early on, some of the bigger... Uh, channels were not so keen on it, I guess. I don't know, the MKBHD or wherever, I don't know. Bottom line is, I think if you look at this in the right way, much like the first version as a productivity tool, I think you're going to really like it. I think it's uh, one of those type of devices that it, if you like it, you like it, you know you like it. And it's the type of device that I love specifically to multitask and do all sorts of things. Um, here we can see, I can go, for instance, I can open uh, Twitter on one pane here, as you can see here. My good friend Dan Gage, you got Viper there, all the people on Twitter. And then, of course, you have, uh, I, can, I can go to a YouTube uh, video. So if I go here, and then I go here, and go to my library, we can take a look at my video from yesterday, which I released yesterday. And thank you, Thunderbolt, for tweeting out something. Anyway, so here it is. And I can actually watch a video, uh, look at my timeline on Twitter on the left, look at the video on the right. Uh, I'm absolutely loving that, okay? And here's what it looks like, of course, um, from the top-down shot. Obviously, I'm showing you through this uh, HDMI dongle here. So very, very nice. You can do all sorts of things. Now, you could also stretch it across... The two displays now not the most efficient obviously you'll see the division between the two displays there uh not as bad as last year since it does have more of a curvature towards the, towards the display so there you go it would be nice to see your reviews in 4k i do in 4k alan all my most 99 percent of my reviews are in 4k so they are uh, which non-traditional form factor for an Android smartphone would you uh, go with, flip, fold, or book? So <laughs> flip, I haven't tried. I did. I do have the fold two. Uh, I had the fold three. I sent it back. I didn't think it was enough of an upgrade over the fold two, which I already owned. And then the book style, which I guess this would be obviously the book style. I'm actually liking this the best so far. That's just me. Now, it does have its pros and it does have its cons, but it does really let you multitask really well. 
Having two separate displays uh, has a lot of advantages. Um, you can have the one screen open here and obviously do that. The pen is also a nice a thing to have on this. Taking notes in a meeting, it's there. You can slip it into your coat pocket, your pants pocket, as I showed you in the video. I'm really liking the form factor. So I prefer the book style like we have here, but of course, everybody has their own preference. So there, it would be good. Uh, NYC Bike 73 says, I think they bashed it too much. No one device is perfect. I think the form factor is great as well, uh, NYC Bike. So I'm glad you, um, you're you liking it. It's not for everyone. I understand it might even be a niche device, obviously. But to me, this is the kind of device that I like to use. Um, now, I also carry the, 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 the 6 Pro from Google, the Pixel 6 Pro, as you see here. Now, my main sim, sim is in this. I don't find that this, I mean, I can use this as my main phone, but I like using this more as a productivity tool. I do have a secondary sim in there that I'm using. Uh, I could make phone calls with it, but I like it more as a productivity tool. I don't need to bring a tablet with me. I don't know, I, I can just bring this. It works great. The pen stays with me with, the, with it on the device. I can use it that way. It's been very, very good. And I like. I really am liking that form factor. Now, is it? Of course, it's not perfect. Like I said, price is not great. There's no wireless charging, which I think is a miss, especially on a fifteen hundred dollar device. Starts at fifteen hundred. It's very expensive, and there are a couple of other things. Software bugs are still there. Not as prevalent. Much better this time around with the Surface Duo Two over the Duo One from last year. Um, and there you go. And, and I think NYC Bike 73 concurs with me in that these are secondary productivity tools, to me at least. Now, I could use it with my main SIM if I wanted to, but I just find that this has worked out so well in this scenario for me because I can free up my main phone to do other things. This is more of my uh, productivity tool. So if I want to, and this has been great for email. And the reason I say that, I don't want to show you the email here, but when I go into Outlook, I can pick an email on and on my list of emails will be on the left side. And then of course, on the right side, the actual email opens up in a separate pane. So I think it's been pretty good. I know you haven't been around lately, but how are you enjoying the MacBook Pro 16 Max? I've been actually uh, enjoying it, uh, Mallory. Uh, I will have a video on that. Uh, I didn't get the Max. I didn't wind up getting the Max. I got the M1 Pro uh 16 inch i don't think i think the max to me is a very very expensive device they're both expensive but even more expensive and it might be overkill for most people but I, i'm gonna have a video on that mallory i'm liking it uh but i don't think i'm going to be keeping it i there's a few reasons why the one one of the one of which is i still don't have full compatibility with all my final cut pro plugins that i need with it so it really is, doesn't do me any good if I can't make the type of videos I want to make, at least not yet. But it's obviously an impressive device, impressive performance, impressive thermals and efficiency on it. Uh, I, I like it. Now, if you are somebody who's a gamer, if you are somebody who likes to tinker with their laptops, and upgrade the RAM, upgrade the SSDs, uh, that's not the device for you. If you need to run Windows in any way, you can run in emulation mode, but that through parallels or something like that, but that will only be Windows and ARM. That brings its own set of problems, so that's not for you. Where it is for a good, it's for a creator. I think that device is for a creator who does Final Cut Pro, who does these professional apps, does a lot of creative work that needs that extra horsepower, and I think it's it's a pretty amazing in that regard. Uh, I have a phone, according to NYC Bike 73, I have a phone and a very compact productivity device with me all, time, all the time. And that's, that's it. That's one of the ways you can use the Surface Duo 2 in that kind of scenario. Uh, and pretty good. So, and, and the other thing I'm liking is a much improved camera setup on this. While not perfect, there are some bugs on it, but it has been much better. And I can show you, uh, and I can have the camera up here. So you can see my messy studio there thank you tcl i have a tablet from tcl they sent me a whole nother gift bag we'll talk about that very soon uh you can see back there all the boxes that i need to uh clean up here um but you can see the camera is a much better camera it has a much better front facing camera than last year as you can see here hello everybody although the lights are playing into this right now um one of the things you can do and i can turn off that video i don't know what that is but anyway 
Uh, if I put this, so if I put the camera here, look, if I, if I, actually, if I put it here, I can have, and let me get rid of this. I don't know why that's playing. I can have, so I have my screen, my photos on the left, I can take on the right. So if I want to take a photograph, I can just hit there, boom. And there you go, I have a photograph. Actually, I think I just did a panorama. Let me do a photo, a normal one. Of course, everything live here. And boom, there you go. So you have on the left side, and there's that photo I just took on the left side. So it's great, great for multitasking, great for productivity, uh, doing emails, and just really, I love it. It's absolutely a great productivity tool. Agent 091, uh, do you think a non-traditional styled smartphone is better than a more traditional combo like a Pixel and an iPad mini? It's a matter of personal preference. There are benefits and there are cons on both. I just prefer this right now. Now, I, I have the Pixel here, the Pixel 6 Pro, I need to, and I have a caseology case on it. Uh, but the Pixel 6 Pro has been great so far. I still need to do my full review on it. I, I'm almost done with it. Uh, I have the Simply Black or whatever they're called, Storm Black, whatever they're calling it. Um, now I do, I do have some issues with it. The fingerprint scanner is not great as has been documented. There is an update that I'm supposed to put on this. I haven't done that yet. I haven't gotten it yet actually, but, uh, overall, I think it's been pretty good. Pixel six pro, uh, nice, nice flagship device. Now in all, uh, dis for disclaimer, I did receive it from team pixel. I did not pay for it. It's free to, for me to use. Obviously I don't have to give it back. So I just want to let everybody know, but there are some issues with it. But overall, I think the cameras are great. I think the overall experience with Google Pixels are great. And I'm liking it. Of course, with updates and so forth, it'll get better. Now, I'm not crazy about that fingerprint scanner. And we'll talk more about that in the review. For, uh, according to Jeremy, for a thin and light Windows laptop, would you choose the Razer Book 13 or the Dell XPS 13? I've used both of them, and I love the Razer Book. But I think I'm going to go with the Dell. Um, I like the Dell a little bit better. I like the OLED display on the Dell, and I reviewed that. For those that didn't see it, check out the uh, link below. You'll you'll definitely um, will like it. it. It's a great device, and I think that OLED display, even on a 13.4 inch display, is absolutely gorgeous. I've gone over it numerous times, so I would pick me personally. I like the Dell XPS 13. So, for those joining us late, uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to thank you for joining us. Since we got 44 of you watching. I hit 120,000 subscribers this past week, so I want to thank everybody for uh, not laughing at me. We shouldn't be laughing, but uh, I want to thank everybody. Round of applause for all of you for helping support the channel, showing up every week, watching the videos, hitting the like button, subscribing. You know the deal. So uh, I want to thank everybody. 120,000 subscribers um, means a lot, and it's getting recognition for, from brands. Obviously, I've been working with Dell, Lenovo, HP. I've got good relationships with them, among other brands as well. MSI now, where I'm, I've gotten some new stuff from them. Um, so really progressing the channel, moving it forward. I got invited to New York uh, on a special briefing. We'll talk about that soon. And I want to know if anybody's in the New York City area, December 8th, 9th, or 10th, we possibly could do a meetup. So want to put it out there if anybody wants to get together. Uh, in the Flatiron District, I'll be around there. So that's about 25th Street or so uh, by the um, Flatiron Building. So that's a really nice area. So let me know. We can maybe do a get-together somewhere in the city. Let me know. All right, Commentary Talk is telling Agent Zero, 12-inch, 2-in-1, new gen, ARM, CPU, M1, et cetera, but with more cellular telephone functionality would be great. Ideal transition from smartphone to full computer device with smartphone features. That is obviously what a lot of people want, those type of devices. Um, and we're going to see, I think, in 2022, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, these new type of devices are coming, these hybrid devices, much like I think you see here. Now, the question is, will... Microsoft continue to support this device. Uh, I think it's gonna, this is a very critical moment for this type of device. I know Surface Duo 1 was much maligned because it really wasn't ready. I think they were planning on putting Windows 10X, I think, on it. And then in the last stages, they had to switch to Android and that created not such a great experience. It had a lot of bugs, didn't have great cameras and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. So 
that has been a pretty interesting uh, evolution on the device. And now we're seeing it in the second generation, much, much improved, much less bugs, much better cameras, and a much better overall experience. Now, the problem is it now comes in $100 more with a starting price of $14.99. Add in another 130 for the Slim Pen 2. Add in another $65 for the pen pen holder case, which you see here. It gets very, very expensive. You can actually get a laptop for that price, a really nice laptop for that price. So you just have to decide, what, it, what are you going to use this device for? To me, it's a great productivity tool. I don't look at it so much as a main phone. I look at it more like a multitasking tool that I can take with me that slips into my coat pocket pants pocket and I don't have to worry about lugging a laptop around and there you go just googled events in New York City 9th and the 8th and 9th December uh, I'll tell you what it is um, but I can't tell you what I will be doing there uh, Dell invited me to uh, the uh, there's a, a briefing but I can't tell you obviously what it is so we'll talk more about that after but I will be in New York City people so if you want to uh, there you go. I can tell you, um, it's Dell and they're, they're having a nice thing. So I, I, it's exciting to see what's going to be upcoming. So I'll talk more about it when the time comes, but I'm, again, I'm under embargo. I can't talk about what they will be showing. I can tell you I go, I'm going there. I just won't tell I can't just, but I, I could also do a live stream from New York. I think it should be pretty interesting. I might just give you an update, say what's going on. And then uh, say hello. And again, I'd love to, if you're in the New York City area, I'd love people to stop by. That would be great. We have 36 of you watching. I had started a little bit late today. I'm not expecting a lot of people, but we have 38 likes. So if we can get that like button hit it, let's get the count up and that would be great. Needs to be about 600 great grams of weight too. Bigger screen, battery life, and smartphone, computer plus voice, touch type cover. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit heavier this time around. And with this case on it, a little bit more thicker too. Uh, not bad. I find it, I don't find it terribly hard to carry around. I think it's a very slim device, but it's pretty good so far. Will, will it not, according to the people's TV, will it not happen to be the next Lumia 950 XL, which I had, which will be better than my Note 20? A very popular device that Lumia, the 950 XL, Lumia 950 XL, that was a very nice device. Um, I don't know what fate this is going to have. Hopefully this will uh, be okay. We won't have to, to have too many. They won't abandon it. Um, hopefully they'll support it and they'll continue supporting it. All right, so let's uh, let's take stock here. What's going on, people? It's Andrew back again, another live stream. We're now 38 minutes into the live stream. Um, good to see David Lance here. What's new? Uh, we got a lot of new stuff coming. Just stay tuned, people. I got a lot of stuff um, and so forth. Um, no problem, People's TV. Commentary, uh, Agent 09 is telling commentary, I personally hate 12-inch tablets. It's large body, makes it dealing with a tablet too cumbersome. And I think he thinks 8-inch tablets are great. I think foldables of the fold are super dope due to them being both. You know, that's a good point, uh, Agent 09. Um, 091, I, I think you got onto something here. Open, I think this is 8.3 inches fully unfolded here, right? So 8.3 inches, I think it was 8.1 last year, so a little bit bigger. The other thing you're going to notice is the fingerprint scanner works really well, by the way. Um, unfolded, this is an 8-inch, basically an 8-inch tablet, right? I carry a 12.9, I used to carry a 12.9-inch iPad Pro from late 20, well, 2018, third gen, I believe, iPad Pro. Anyway, I've been using that up until this uh, as my main tablet, and I would take it with me. But, you know, it's a little bit heavy, especially with that Magic Keyboard cover, you know, that it has. Uh, that does weigh a little bit. In fact, it weighs probably more than some laptops I've been reviewing. This is an 8-inch tablet, basically, and it allows me to fold it, put it in my pocket, have pen support when I need it, slips into my breast pocket of my suit jacket if I'm wearing a suit, and then I can then just pull it out and pu and get things done. Uh, email on one side, uh, Twitter on the other, video on one side, and then you get the picture. You can multitask, and it has been great. I can run t 
tabs in Chrome on one side. Again, watch a video on the other. So there's a lot of scenarios you can use this. It's really good. The People's TV is saying, I expect a 12-inch of the same device, but at a mid-range level, that would help us in productivity. Yeah, no problem. Steve, yep, I'm glad you were able to join us talking about the Duo. Yeah, I'm liking the Duo. Here you see the Duo 2. I just unboxed, and you can watch it on the replay. This is the Surface Duo case for the pen with the pen holder, and I can take this off. We don't need this for now. Um, you can see it here, and it's like a frosted, like matte finish on it which i like so you might see less fingerprints on the top there uh let me show you here um here you go much better and then there you can see how thin it is um now i have the bumper case from the original on the other side but this does come with those extra pieces for the bumper as well so i didn't change that out either not yet but looks good so far and then if i fold it this is what it looks like folded back not that great because the pen is there uh pen sticks magnetically very securely obviously uh there it goes so you can see it's like a sandwich <laughs> but um i don't use it that much like this I, I thought i would use it more like this but sometimes it's great if you want to read a book or you just go like this uh great as a ebook reader especially with the kindle app it's been pretty good now the the fingerprint scanner works really well uh on this as well so i haven't had no issues uh multitasking has been great Again, you can, just for those that didn't see it, if you want to see, I can show you, um, I can go to Instagram on one side, and then there you go. Oops. But you, you get the picture. So I can have my weather here, all sorts of things. Um, and then if I want to have my calendar, I can pick a date and so forth, and then the event will show up on the right side. A lot, a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. All right. Good smartphone to doodle with. Yeah, it's great with the pen, except, you know, it's very expensive. How's the software support? Glad to be back. Emmanuel, uh, software has been good. I've already had two pretty big, two major updates. I had one right out of the box uh, when I unboxed it, about, uh, I think, six, eight, six to 800 megabytes. So it fixed a lot of bugs right off the bat. And then one in November... Uh, I just updated, and it did fix some more bugs. So they are supporting it. They're very committed to it. And I believe this will eventually get Android 12. I think this has 11 on it, if I'm mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me see what it has um, as far as the uh, what Android version it's running. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it is Android 11. Hopefully, they'll get 12. I'm running 12 on the Pixel 6 Pro, which you see here. I've been using it with this uh, case here. Uh, this is the Caseology Pixel 6 Pro, and not a bad case. Um, it keeps the uh, camera protrusion even with the, uh, the desk and so forth, so it's been pretty good. Uh, we could put that there. So you can get the picture of these two devices here. Uh, again, this opens up to an 8.3 inch device and so forth. And it's been pretty interesting. All right. I'm going to open it up to any question. He asked me anything while we, uh, the last 15 minutes or so of the live stream, let me know what you want to talk about. We can talk about pretty much anything within reason. If not, we can call it a day. <laughs> it's either what it's up to you people. All right. So let me tell you what else is coming up on the channel. I Again, those of you joining us late, I have the MSI Z Creator Z16. It's a uh, laptop with a RTX 3000 series GPU. Uh, it's got 11th gen uh, H-series processors, and there you go. How is it just a phone? You know, I don't really use it that much as a phone. It's fine. Um, it is a little bit wide to use as a phone. So if I'm going to use this as a phone... I'd be like this, you know, so you tell me, you tell me, how does it look? You know, it's okay. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. I'm using it more as a productivity tool, Andy. So it's fine as a phone and it works fine. I mean, as far as it has 5G, the couple of things that are new this year is that now you have 5G. I'm using it uh, with the uh, Google Fi. And then I also have it with, uh, you can use it with Verizon if you want to use that SIM or AT&T here in the United States. Now, 
The other thing is it also now has NFC. That was also missing last year. So if you want to use Google Pay and stuff like that, you have the option now. So it's been pretty good. Oh, yeah, for, uh, community talk. That Glad you brought that up. I did speak with Framework. I'm waiting on their... They're going to be sending me a uh, review unit. They just have a very limited supply. So I am on the list. So hopefully I'll be getting it soon. I am very interested in the Framework laptop. For those that don't know what that is, the Framework laptop is uh, a modular uh, laptop that allows you to switch out the different ports, highly upgradable, you could switch out many, many things on this. So if you're one of those people that likes to uh, tinker with their laptops, upgrade it frequently and change it out, different things, it gives you that ability. It's a pretty interesting concept, and I'm hoping it goes mainstream. So this is a good device to check out, and I did speak with Framework. They will be sending me a unit. Do you think, according to NYC Bike 73, do you think the Duo 2 could pass a mini computer backup unit? I mean, it just depends on how you're using it. Um, it is, in a way, a mini computer. You can, you, you can actually connect to a, a nice little mini keyboard or a foldable keyboard. There are a number of them on Amazon uh, that you can probably use with this. Some people do it, use it like that. I've seen videos on that. I tend to use the pen more. Uh, obviously, use the typing with my fingers on it uh, to type out text messages, emails, and so forth, or even use the pen to type out. But the bottom line is... You have options with that. Yes, it can be a mini PC. I connected it to a, you can connect it to a monitor via HDMI as I showed, as I could connect it here to this live stream. So there are, there is a lot of ways you can use this. So you can use it with a monitor. You can, portable monitor works. You can use it with a keyboard and mouse. Uh, a lot of Android functionality obviously is uh, expandable. Allison Morgan was just watching the framework laptop review before this started from PC World. Yeah, Allison. I reached out to them. I spoke with Framework. They're nice people over there. Uh, they're not a huge company, but they are uh, sending out review units. They have a limited supply, but I am on the list. So hopefully I will get a chance to check it out very soon. So stay tuned. Emmanuel Genja says, on an unrelated note, do you think that we should have a poll to see how many people want a speaker preview in the laptop videos? <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, we could do a poll. I you know, I could do them. Here's the problem, Emmanuel. I used to do them, if you watched my channel early on. The reason I don't show any kind of speaker test in my videos is because you don't, everybody's listening experience will be different because everybody's listening and watching on a different type of device. So you will not get a true accurate uh, reflection of what the audio actually is, right? Now, I what I could do is compare it to a, say, a MacBook, which I think has a great audio, I think it's the best, and then just compare everything to that, which some people do that. I find that not to be the most efficient either, so I just tell you what my experience is rather than actually give you a sound test, because again, you're gonna listen on headphones, you're gonna listen to laptop speakers, you're gonna listen to uh, USB speakers, they're gonna give you a different experience, so you won't get a true accu accurate reflection of the sound. Excuse me, a little bit of dry throat here. And I think uh, NYC Bike 73 has a good point. These are great for uh, vertical market. If you're out in the field, uh, such as a, a construction project, this is a great device because it allows you to do multitasking in a different way. It's a portable multitasking tool. So you can have email open on one side. You could be texting on the other side. You could have, you need to see schematics or diagrams on one side. Again, the, having the dual displays, I can't overemphasize how important that is because can't emphasize it enough because it really is a, a productivity tool. And if you are a business person out in the field like NYC Bike 73, you're going to be able to take advantage of that. Now, I use it mostly to check emails and, and texting and, and stuff like that, watching videos, having the dual displays allows me to do more things efficiently. And it's been working pretty well. Now, it's not without bugs. It's not without problems. But for the most part, I think they solved a lot of the issues they had last year. Now, could they get better? I think they will. Now, Microsoft is notorious for, and historically speaking, it takes them about three tries before they get a device right, right? Right. So it took them three tries to get the Surface devices right, the Surface Pro line. Surface Pro 3 was a breakthrough for them. It took them three tries, 
uh, for Windows, right? So Windows 1 and 2 are lousy, but Windows 3.1 really um, opened it up to the world, really. They really had a big success, a smashing success. And I think the same can be said here. We're already on the second iteration. It's a much, much improved product. And I think the Surface Duo 3 might be the sweet spot. Again, price is going to be a big issue next year, 2022. Will they come in cheaper or at the same price or will they be more expensive? Remember, they came in $100 more in the Surface Duo 2 than they did with the Surface Duo 1. So we'll have to see. So far, as a second attempt, I think it's been pretty good. All right, we're at 51 minutes. I don't know how much longer we're going to go. Any other questions? Let's see. Um, let's see. There's some new comments here. Steve is saying, let's bring Steve on here. Uh, I heard the sales of this Duo 2 are not that great. Hope there is a third gen. Again, a lot of things can happen. They can kill off the product. We never even got the Surface Neo uh, we talked about earlier. I know, Steve, you joined us late. It was... Uh, did make a brief appearance in the Red Notice movie on Netflix. So anybody wants to watch that with Ryan Reynolds, um, he was showing a, there was a scene where he was shown using a Surface Neo, whether that was given to them while production was underway before Microsoft allegedly, allegedly killed it. We'll see, but I would love to see that they would bring that out actually as a working production product. We'll see, that would be great. As far as sales, uh, I have not heard anything, you know, anything could happen. And it, that's not just Microsoft. That's all the, the brands and OEMs. Anything could happen, especially during this pandemic where things are not normal as we think, as we normally know. There's a supply shortage in terms of chips. It affects everything down the line. So we'll see what happens. All right. Okay, I think we're coming towards the end here. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, stopping by. I'm going to stop at about 52 minutes. I think it's enough. I'm glad I was able to come in here today a little bit late than I normally do, but it was a good live stream. I want to thank the moderators for doing such a great job. I want to rem remind everybody I will be in New York City December 8th, 9th, and 10th. So uh, let's see if we can organize a meetup for those in the New York City area. Let me know. Let me know in the comment section below on the replay. I'll leave it up, obviously. And then if not, we can try to maybe meet up at Las Vegas, here in Las Vegas during CES. If any other creators or any other people want to just meet up, maybe we can schedule something that time. I know we've talked about it in the past. Let's see if we can get a meetup going. Anybody in the Las Vegas area, uh, let me know. Other than that, I want to say... Goodbye, and I have a lot of stuff coming up this week, so uh, stay tuned. A lot more to come. So until then, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.